Public Speaking Project presents An Introduction to Visual Aids by Eliza Thompson and Lisa Schreiber, Ph.D. Voice Talent by Nicholas Givens with Rebecca Nyer as the Audio Engineer and Morgan Hartraft as the Media Production Specialist. Imagine a renowned baker named Paula, who is known for her delicious cakes and creative cake designs, is giving a speech. She is talking about cake decorating at the annual culinary fair. Paula has a strong script written, but during her speech, her words alone do not seem to truly get her point across, and the audience starts to lose interest. Think of how much more effective Paula's speech could be if she showed them a physical cake or gave them a demonstration of decorating techniques. The audience would be able to take in the enticing smell and see the detailed handiwork. If the venue would not allow food, she could display examples of previous works through a PowerPoint slideshow. By looking at the various cake designs, the audience would be better able to visualize Paula's process and creativity. They would also be more likely to pay attention to her words. This is the power of the presentation aid, also known as the visual aid. Visual aids are a form of visual rhetoric which backs up or provides evidence for the verbal rhetoric in a speech. Essentially, visual rhetoric is the integration of images into the communication process. Audiovisual aids go one step further and incorporate sound into the visual rhetoric. This is most commonly seen in video clips, though other presentation aids can also contain audio and video, including PowerPoint and Prezi slide presentations. If designed and used correctly, presentation aids can greatly enhance the effectiveness of your speech. However, you have to consider the situation, the goals of your speech and your audience when you are deciding whether or not to use a presentation aid. Beginning speakers need to understand some of the basics about speech aids so that they can decide if using such an aid is a good idea. If you elect to use a presentation aid, you must also decide when and where these visuals will be introduced into your speech. In this module, we won't be able to cover all the aspects of presentation aids. However, you can find an entire chapter about presentation aids in our free textbook, Public Speaking, the Virtual Text, at www.publicspeakingproject.org. The purpose of this module is to help beginning speechwriters understand what a presentation aid is, the advantages of using presentation aids, and the key times to use them. A presentation aid can be defined as any supplemental material that is presented outside the spoken words of a speech. The aid can be a number of things from the standard PowerPoint to an eclectic object like a butter churner. Pictures, audio, video, Graphs, charts, and written words all count. So long as it relates to the speech, anything can serve as an aid. Even the speakers themselves can serve as a presentation aid, depending on the speech's topic. For example, if you were discussing a new line of athletic apparel, you could use yourself as a visual aid. You might decide to dress in the clothing to show it while keeping the audience's attention on you. We live in a highly visual society, and we get our information from a number of visually appealing media. TV, the internet, and product ads all get people's attention with visual rhetoric. Images sell the products we buy and influence our worldviews. Visuals are therefore a vital part of modern communication, especially when addressing a large audience. When you give a speech, you might not have the same number of audience members as a popular TV show, but your speech can include the same presentation techniques that keep an audience's attention. Today, listeners not only want visuals, they often expect them. Now that you know what a presentation aid is and the importance of images in our society, let's take a look at the advantages of using visual aids. The first advantage of using presentation aids is that they aid memory and recall. Ideally, a presentation aid should appeal to a number of different senses, such as sight, hearing, smell, and touch. The way that we perceive information is related to our preferred learning style. Everyone learns differently. Some people learn best by reading and watching. 
some prefer to learn by listening, and some learn best by hands-on activities. This is important to keep in mind as you are writing your speech because appealing to several senses reinforces the information and makes it easier to remember. So, when listeners both hear and see the information, they learn it more easily and remember it better. Consequently, a presentation aid can be a valuable tool to help the audience remember the speaker's concepts. The second advantage of using presentation aids is that they can capture and maintain an audience's attention. Think about how images or sounds can capture your attention. Do you ever click on web links on your computer's homepage because of a startling picture? Have you purchased a magazine because the cover image caught your eye and drew you to the content inside? Do you find yourself sucked into a YouTube browsing session when a friend sends you a link to one video? Have emergency sirens close by drawn you to a window to see what is happening? Has a loud public argument at the mall caused you to stare at the people yelling at each other? If you have answered yes to any of these questions, then you have experienced the attention-getting power of images and sounds. These images and sounds not only get our attention, they also help to keep it. According to Brad Vander Zanden, the average adult attention span is about 20 minutes. Students typically have even lower attention spans. In a 2010 study by Bunce, Flens, and Niels at Washington University, they found that college students frequently experience attention lapse. Their attention wanders every 7 to 10 minutes or so. As we mentioned earlier, we live in a visual culture where people are used to consuming information at a fairly fast pace. Think about how quickly you move from channel to channel on your TV or from web page to web page on your computer. This behavior can make it difficult for speakers to hold an audience's attention. Good presentation aids can keep an audience focused on the ideas you want to share. The third advantage of using a presentation aid is that it can be a concrete and persuasive means of support. A picture or recording can sometimes convey things that words alone cannot express. This is one of the reasons why photos, objects, 911 recordings, and animated videos that recreate crimes are used in legal trials. These presentation aids can help give a jury a sense of what did or did not happen when the crime was committed. Presentation aids can also make your speech more persuasive. Say that a speaker was trying to convince the audience to make a donation to victims of a recent tsunami. Showing pictures of the devastation caused by the tsunami is far more convincing than just talking about it. As the cliche goes, seeing is believing. A video interviewing some of the victims might even be more powerful, as these people would have a chance to explain in their own words the horror of the disaster. Audience members, in turn, would be moved by the emotion in the victims' voices and their pained facial expressions. In short, both the pictures and video would elicit more empathy from the audience than words alone, which in turn would make them more likely to donate to the relief efforts. The fourth advantage of using presentation aids is that they can simplify complex material. Complicated material can be hard for your audience to understand, even if you are very careful when you explain it. If a math professor described a math equation without writing it down, it would be very difficult to grasp. Mentally sorting through the numbers would cause headaches and would likely to result in them getting jumbled up. When sharing numerical data like statistics or comparisons, it is helpful to convert it into graphs, tables, and charts. A well-made graph clearly summarizes data so an audience can instantly recognize quantities, trends, and patterns. During Hans Rosling's TED videos, he displays a number of interactive graphs about survival rates and wealth distribution in order to illustrate the truth about modern world health. Instead of making them static visuals, Rosling added color and animation. This allowed him to show his statistics over a number of years without making the graph too complicated for the audience to understand. The audience also enjoyed the motion as it caught their attention and gave the speech energy. The fifth advantage of presentation aids is that they can clarify the organizational pattern of a speech. Even when you think the organizational pattern of your speech is logical and fairly obvious to the audience, you need to remember that the ear is a very poor information-gathering device. In general, people have poor listening skills, which means they are likely to get lost easily when their attention wanders. 
Using bulleted lists in your speech to illustrate your main points and subpoints, like we are doing in this video, provides a roadmap for your audience to follow as you proceed through the ideas in your speech. The sixth potential advantage of using presentation aids is that they may enhance a speaker's credibility. Note that the key word here is may. On one hand, a professionally designed presentation aid that is skillfully displayed will likely impress an audience. On the other hand, a poorly designed or poorly handled presentation aid will actually reduce a speaker's credibility. So, it is very important that you select and use your presentation aids that are within your ability to design and display. For instance, if you do not have a great deal of time to prepare a presentation, it is probably better to forego using speech aids than to present ones that are sloppy because they were made too quickly. Finally, the seventh and last advantage of using presentation aids is that they can be useful for multicultural audiences. When audience members are listening to a speech in their second or third language, having points written out for them and pictures to illustrate can greatly increase comprehension. In fact, using cartoons to illustrate actions and ideas to people who are illiterate or don't speak one's language has been a common practice in the World Health Education programs and war propaganda for many years. It should be clear that there are a number of good reasons to consider using presentation aids. But once you decide to use a presentation aid, you need to determine when and where to use them.